all right welcome back so i put a video on before that was a giveaway video uh, that if you could guess whatever this is that i would make you one and send it to you at my own dime time is up it's 6 p.m on friday october the 7th what you're seeing here is me clean this off with rubbing alcohol just so that it gets all the dirt and fine grits off of it and sand it down this is a project that i started quite a while back before I ever even started the YouTube channel and I poured this epoxy, I put a live flower out of one of my wife's vases inside of it just to see if I could do it. Sanding takes forever. Here you're gonna see me starting the second one and I'm cutting out 1 16th inch strips for a ribbon through the zebra board which you'll see here in a little bit. Um, I use my bandsaw which is Rikon 14 inch deluxe Take the time to make sure that I cut it nice and straight. Just remember if you're doing ribbons, they've got to be pliable to fit inside of and bend around any curves that you are going to be placing, whether it's in a cutting board or anything decorative that you're gonna be doing the glue upon. So I take the time, I make sure that both of them are correct, about a 16th of an inch, which should match up with the width of the blade so that I have no gaps. Now I'm going to take my zebra board and I'm going to cut a swerve through it so that I can place the first of the two ribbons inside of it. The ribbons are maple. Of course, this is zebra board, zebra wood, sorry, zebra wood. Um, and I'm just, same thing, cut it with my bandsaw. I did mark on it, just a rough idea of kind of how I wanted the ribbon to go. I wanted both ribbons to interweave with each other, which you'll see here in just a second. Make sure that they fit together like a nice little puzzle piece, and they do. Do a little sanding in between. Um, but first, let's make sure that my ribbon's gonna make it inside of it. Do a little dry fit. Hand pressure, push it, push it. Oh, there you go. All right, so I like the way that it's gonna look. Sanded it down a little bit. Let's add a little Type On 3. Once again, one of my favorite glues, or my only favorite glue because it is waterproof. I use it on just about every one of my projects. It has never let me down. I am not sponsored by Type On. I'm not sponsored by anybody, um, but I do like their product. And I'll always do a shout out to anybody's product that I like. Uh, so rub it on with my finger. I know a lot of folks use the brush. I guess maybe you'd call me old school or whatever, but I enjoy filling my project. Squeeze it up there just a little bit. Press it down. Make sure that your ribbon is flush and even with the top. If you did it properly, hopefully all of it's flush, top and bottom. Um, now, just to let you know while I'm clamping down on here, number one, don't over tighten the clamps. You don't want to cut the board. Um, you'll never use too many clamps, but don't over tighten. That is a big no-no in the glue up world. Prior to even cutting my curve inside of this board, I did run it through the planer. Uh, I jointed the edges, squared it all up, made sure that everything was all the same size so that it would go together properly. Add those clamps. Always gotta have the clamps. Man, that is starting to look really good. That's only one ribbon going through it. That would have been nice enough to look good. But let's go ahead and set up, cut the swerve, and go for the second ribbon. Speed up the glue up this time just a little bit. Rub those fingers. Always have some paper towels close to you. you. Need something to wipe it on and I don't like wiping it on my clothes. As you can tell, I'm always in my work outfit because I usually come home and work on my projects after I get off of work from my actual job. So let's get this all glued up. Make sure that you've got a nice, nice smooth covering of glue so that you get squeeze out rather do the cleanup on squeeze out then I would not have enough glue to actually hold it together so let's press it down make sure everything is right no need to hold the clamps down they're not going anywhere clamp 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 and I did take it over to my rockler uh, table saw sled and squared up everything nice on all four sides so that I wouldn't have any issues cut off the excess now let's do what we all enjoy sand and sand 
Let's switch our grids from 80 to 120. Sand some more from 120. We're gonna go up to a 180 and some more. And I am sanding all the sides up to a 240. And you're seeing the rubbing alcohol here, but I was cleaning in between each and every one of the uh, sanding sections just to make sure that I didn't have anything to the router table. I, I have an Incra uh, lift and I have a, ro a Rockler router table. And so you see me lifting it here, getting my height where I'm going to want it, lock it into place. And we're gonna do a round over on three sides because the back side, when I have a round over, it is going against a wall, which you'll see at the end of the video, which will also show you what it is that I'm making. Show you the round over. It's really nice and smooth. Uh, I just do a small little round over so that it softens the corners up, no sharp edges on there. Hit it with a 320 on all of those edges and on the face just to smooth it up, soften it up a little bit. Never sand too much in these things. If you're gonna work on wooden projects, prepare to sand. One coat from Minwax. It's a polyurethane, which is a really nice one coat, though I never stop with just one, I always do two. Um, I go in and sand in between with a 600 grit or 400 grit and then a 600 grit and then put on a second coat. Now I know a lot of people aren't gonna agree with the way that I apply this, so I just dab it on there and then I use a rag, a normal household wash rag, and I smear it around just a little bit, get a really good coating on it side to side, make sure every part of it is getting coverage, and then I go back and smooth it with a brush. Long strokes from front to back, every time, end to end. Come in and let's see that uh, flower inside of the epoxy strapped to some walnut. I personally thought it looked really good. The zebra wood with the ribbons in it also looks really well. But these are opinions. Not everyone's going to agree with my opinion on what looks good and what doesn't look good. Make sure I touch it up just a little bit. Now back over to the routing table because I decided to do this at the end. I'll explain in a minute. I am doing a rabbit on the back side of the zebra wood. Which is a three quarter inch rabbit by nine and a half inches. my little rabbit there. Uh oh, you saw four holes. May give you a chance to guess on what it is now. Use the chisels, which honestly, I'm not that good at. I'm still working on that skill. So this is the part that I'm gonna glue in. Nine and a half inches long, about three, quarter, three and a quarter inches, three quarter inches wide, two inches and that is so I can strap it to the wall to hold it there. On the epoxy version, I used L brackets, little metal L brackets, and I am no fan of that. I will be going back and changing it, but in this video, you'll see those L brackets. Uh, here I'm measuring out where I want my holes for the screws to go into the wall, and then I will use a 3 8 inch uh, Forstner bit to countersink and then I'm going to go back with a bit to put a hole all the way through so there's no cracking of the wood whenever I put the screws in. Now let's glue it up. I know, you can never see enough glue ups, right? Smear it on with that finger again. Make sure you've got it smooth all the way across, good coverage. On this piece, I'll just put it on the bottom. Whenever I go to this section though, I'm gonna make sure that I smear up into the edges. I only took it about a fourth of an inch deep. I didn't wanna go much deeper than that. 
It'll have plenty of glue coverage to hold it nicely inside of there. Put it together, make sure we're good. Let's get a clamp on this thing. I'll wait another one. Nah, uh, that's not enough. Let's uh let's get another one real quick. No, another one. Oh, we better make sure we hold it at 90. This is the epoxy walnut version with the L clamps, some galvanized pipe, and yes, they are toilet paper holders. That's what they are. Not many charcuterie boards, not soap dishes. They are toilet paper holders, which my wife has been asking for. And here's the zebra wood. Um, definitely stronger and better with the zebra wood backing on there to connect to the wall. Oh, I've seen that video before. Hmm. That looks really familiar, actually. Hmm. I wonder what that guy's building. Bet I could take a guess. Look how it turned out. Really beautiful. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, share the video. Thank you for watching to the end. Y'all have been fantastic. Keep coming back to see what else we do.